What's going on guys, this is MCS Red. Today I got a video for you on the Gen 2 installation on the 468 DMR and it will be the same for the standard 468 once we release that valve. So first, all we're gonna need for this uh, video is the lower receiver, uh, which I have here. I'm gonna take it down all the way to, uh, I'm gonna remove the valve and put it back in. In your kit, you're gonna get the valve, the new screw, and then your spring set for the Gen 2 upgrade. So it's already pretty much installed here, but I just wanna remove it and put it back together to show you exactly how to get in here and remove, and then also uh, if you need to do any maintenance or replace any parts, you can do that here. So let's get right into it. Okay, so in your lower receiver, you have your magwell, and then obviously your lower receiver, and then on the standard DMR, not the PTR DMR, but the standard DMR, which what we're doing the video on today, has a detachable trigger frame. So we're gonna take out the magwell. Don't lose any pieces, your anti-ball drop. And then we will take out our internals. So you have your locking pin, which is on your uh, left side of the marker. You can get into your velocity housing, your velocity spring, spring guide, and then the housing itself, and then your bolt and your uh, rubber gasket, which is your spacer or buffer. Um, from here, we're pretty much stripped out. We don't need to do anything else. Uh, from here, we can actually leave the trigger frame intact, um, but for the sake of this video, I'm actually going to remove it because we need to get the valve out completely. So. Take, make sure you're using the right size Allens for all of your disassembly. If you don't do that, you have the chance of stripping it um, and then you're gonna be in a whole other world of uh, frustration. So make sure you use the right size Allen keys for all of your disassembly. Go ahead and just remove the trigger frame here. And while you have the trigger frame open, if you haven't done maintenance on your DMR in a long time, what you'll wanna do is apply some Teflon grease to the trigger frame itself, which is right here in this area. Be liberal with it. You don't need to be uh, conserving anything uh, unless you got budget cuts. Uh, you don't need to do that. Just apply grease to all this area. This is your sear, uh, your trigger itself, and then your springs in there as well. Set this to the side. Now we just have our lower receiver here. Um, as you can see on the older generation, uh, on the detachable trigger frame version of 468 version DMR, we have a screw right here. And we do need to remove that in order for that valve to come out. So you just need a flathead screwdriver. And you're just gonna back that out. There you have it. There's a screw right there, don't lose that. Set that to the side. Now we're gonna be able to get out that valve. And how we do that, there's a pin here that's actually holding in this velocity housing cover. Uh, and we need to get out that pin. Now, the thing is that a lot of people forget is there's knurling on that pin. And it's usually on the, it looks like here, on the left side. So we're gonna hit it out from the right. And how you do that, you're just gonna get, if you have a punch, you can do that. If you don't, then um, obviously you'll need to use an Allen key of sort and get that out. You can actually use your locking pin as well, uh, which I use most of the time, but sometimes. Okay, there we go. So actually, looks like our knurling was on the opposite side, so I'll hit it from that side. You don't want to hit the knurling all the way through, or you're pretty much going to ruin that pin. Um, you have to replace it because you want this to stay in, but the magwell does. Uh, keep it in. So I'm going to use something with a little bit more leverage here. Just tap this out. There we go. Much easier. Okay. So here's your pin. And as you can see, this will loosen off. You just pull it off. And your poppet assembly is behind this area. There we go. So there's an O-ring on that. So you want to make sure that that's all good. And then from there, your poppet assembly will come out. Looks just like that. Now, the only part that's left in there is our valve, which we need to get out. And you're gonna need to remove that from the rear um, where your uh, um, velocity housing was at. Just take a pen, whatever you can that's long enough, and then uh, push that through. 
Here is your Gen 2 valve. Now the difference between the old Gen valves and the new Gen valve is obviously this is flush all, excuse me, all the way around. And they have a little notch here that your trigger frame screw, the one that we loosened, this one right here, goes into. So that's how you get the valve out from the marker. Now we're gonna put it back in. For those of you that have the older style are gonna be installing it. You want to inspect this and make sure this is nice and clean. Nothing is on here because this actually does seal to the poppet, uh, which is right here. So when you reinstall, what happens is this poppet uh, lays flush and opens and closes every time you hit the trigger. Uh, every time you hit the trigger, the striker will hit this, open it, and give, uh, give air to the marker to fire the projectile. So you wanna make sure that this is able to move back and forth nicely. If it doesn't, you may have a burr or some sort on this side, which you're gonna to want to remove um, if it doesn't go in uh, nice and smooth. You also have the new hole that's at the top here. It's now three millimeter, which allows for the most precise air transfer from the lower to the upper receiver, which gives you that consistency that you're looking for when using shape projectiles. You always wanna make sure that your poppet is also clean. And from this point, we can go ahead and reinstall. There's really no maintenance you need to do on here. Just make sure that it's nice and clean. You can run a squeegee through there. There is a pin going through the middle, so just go one from the front and one from the back. But we'll go ahead and reinstall now. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that the hole is in the upward position, and you can push this in with your finger. Just take your pinky finger and push it all the way back until it's nice and flush in that hole. You can see it right there in the middle. You can use an o -ring or an Allen key of anything or like I said, the locking ring and make it nice and straight. We want that uh, hole to be directly into that center so that way when we put our locking screw back in, which we're gonna do right now, it'll go right in that groove that I showed you. So go right in here. It's gonna go nice until this is nice and snug. We need to over torque it. Take our poppet assembly and we're gonna put that back in. We'll go ahead and uh, move our valve over just a little bit. It's turned on us. Let's see here. Let's make sure that that goes over nice and straight. There we go. You can mess with that. You don't want to lose your upper and lower receiver seal. What I like to do is apply a little bit of super glue to one of the corners of that so that way it has it. Okay, pop it assemblies back in. Take our valve cover. We want to make sure that the leaf spring and the holes are facing down. I'm going to push this in. There we go. Take our pin and put it in from the opposite knurling side. If, you're, if your pin has knurling, you just do it from that opposite side. Tap it till it's nice and flush. We can go ahead and put our trigger frame back on first. Make sure that you're, you didn't lose your screws. Put that back on there. And I like to do the front screw first just for, uh, once you get it started, it'll allow you to um, It'll allow you to then set the rear um, screw into the hole nice and perfectly. So you can probably get it started with your finger and then just tighten it up with your Allen. Once again, these do not need to be over torqued. These just need to be um, set in there enough to nice and stiff. They do have a locking ring on them. so. Tighten that down. There we go, nice and snug. Same thing with the front, nice and snug. Put our striker back in, put the, this is how you got it out. Press the trigger to bypass that sear. There we go. And then from here, we 
We can put our buffer in, our velocity spring, and then our housing. Turn that. Don't forget our locking ring. That's very important. We're going to put our locking ring back in there. There we go. And then we'll add our anti-ball drop. And I like to do that by just uh, putting the anti-ball drop in first with the pin facing like that. Hold it with your index finger and then slide the magazine into the grooves on both sides. Push down the leaf spring and lock it into place. Don't let your finger get caught in there. Chinese finger trap right there. And then you just go make sure that that's working nice and by pushing it up and down. And that's it, it's your install. From that point, you can reassemble your upper receiver. Your striker should be in the rear position, which is where you want it. Uh, you can, when you reinstall your upper, make sure your bolt's in the forward position. That way uh, you'll have that, it makes sure that it guarantees to go inside that track. Other than that, if you guys have any questions or concerns or looking to upgrade your old DMR to the new G DMR Gen 2 valve, you guys know where to find us. We'll see you guys out on the field.